Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today I want to address some of the concerns that some people have with brown rice and possibly other grains as well. We do know that brown rice and other whole grains do contain what we call phytic acid or phytates. It's a common uh, component that is found in whole grains. It's known to bind with some minerals in that food, that particular food. And some of those minerals might be iron and zinc, uh, calcium for sure. And it will reduce our uh, ability to absorb those nutrients found in that food. They're commonly called anti-nutrients and they are found in seeds and nuts and legumes and other whole grains in addition to brown rice. Its function in those foods is to serve as a storage form of phosphorus until it's needed after germination. So there is a purpose there for the phytic acid. Soaking rice or the seeds or nuts or what we're talking about, legumes, sprouting them or maybe even lactic acid fermentation has been shown to reduce the phytates in those foods. Now, on the other hand, phytic acid does also have some health benefits and these are things that are not often talked about that I'm going to bring this out. It is, phytic acid is an antioxidant and it's been shown to help protect against kidney stones and cancer. It might be a part of the reason why eating whole grains has been shown to be protective against colon cancer. So the rule of thumb, the advice is that if you eat a healthful, varied diet, phytic acid should not be a concern. It should not be something that you're avoiding grains or rice or nuts or seeds over. If you're overly concerned about the phytates, yes, you can soak them out, but there might also be some benefits to them as well. Another concern with brown rice is that it may contain arsenic. We all know that arsenic is very, very toxic and detrimental to our health if we consume it. Now the amount of arsenic that's going to be found in brown rice is going to depend upon a number of factors. It's going to depend upon the soil that it was grown in, the water that was used for irrigation, the time of year that the rice was grown, and the amount of arsenic, if any, that's in your own household water supply, because it can be in there from your pipeline or from the groundwater that you are using. Okay, there are a lot of factors that can affect how much arsenic may or may not be in your rice. So with that being said, it's really hard to determine how much arsenic there really is in there. And, and also, the amount that's in there can depend upon how you prepare it and cook it. You can help to reduce potential arsenic that's in your rice, one, by washing it well before you cook it. That will help to reduce any surface amount of arsenic that might be in there. And another way to help reduce it would be to cook it in a lot of water, not just the recommended amount that's on the bag that so when the rice is done cooking, all the water is gone. You can boil it like you would pasta in a lot of water. When the rice is as tender as you want it to be, drain it, strain it really well, and take that extra water out, let that extra water go down the drain, and you're done. Your rice is cooked. So it's not that hard to deal with the potential of arsenic that might be in there. Lignans are also potential concerns for some people. They are found in rice bran. So if we're eating brown rice, which has the bran intact, it may have some lignans in there. Our gut bacteria convert lignans to a compound called enterolactone. That's an isoflavone that may actually have some health benefits. It's known that enterolactone does have weak estrogenic activities in the body, but the extent to which it affects us is not well understood. 
However, diets that are rich in lignin-containing foods have been shown to have a consistent effect on lowering cardiovascular disease risks. Also, researchers have found that a reduced risk of breast cancer and possibly endometrial and ovarian cancers have been found in postmenopausal women with a high lignin intake. Now, take note that they do say that's in postmenopausal women. The same effect was not found in women who are still ovulating and who have not gone through menopause yet, so bear that one in mind. Another factor that may or may not be a concern to some people who are shying away from rice is a compound called ferulic acid. It is an antioxidant that's found in rice bran, therefore it's going to be in brown rice because we still have the bran intact in brown rice. And research has shown that this particular compound, ferulic acid, may protect against cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. So I want to help to clarify these things for you and take some of the fear away from eating whole grains, in particular brown rice. Now if you have other reasons you want to stay away from it or need to stay away from it, that's certainly allowed and it's up to you on what you need to do. But I want to clarify some of the information that's out there about some of these compounds. They may not be quite as detrimental as some resources make them out to be. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.